families to be able to afford a home. Question number six, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Housing. Does he stand by his statement on restricting non-residents from buying residential homes? I think the policy is a gimmick. I don't think it will work. Honourable Dr Yes, Nick I do. Smith. It is a gimmick. The first problem with the policy is there's no evidence that overseas buyers are having any impact on house prices. The second problem is that any such policy would be notoriously difficult to implement. We've got 40% of Aucklanders were born not in New Zealand, and we're not going to have a situation where you have to show your passport before you're going to be able to buy a property. The third contradiction in the policy is exempting Australia. A great principle where you say you're not going to have non-residents buying houses in New Zealand, except for Australians, which happen to be the largest group of overseas people buying houses in New Zealand. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he think it would be a gimmick to promise 39,000 houses in Auckland with no guarantee that even one of them will be affordable and no guarantee that most of them won't be snapped up by speculators? Honourable would Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, it would be if it wasn't backed up by a substantive accord with the Auckland Council, an agreement in work by officials in both government and councils to implement it. If it wasn't backed up with a substantive bill before this parliament, which will free up land supply and enable new subdivisions to occur at a fast rate. In fact, what you're seeing from this government with both the social housing bill and the Housing Accords Bill is more action on housing affordability in more than a decade. Su order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If he believes that increasing the supply of houses will increase affordability, why does he refuse to accept that reducing demand by restricting offshore speculators and taxing their profits will also increase affordability. Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, if it was such a great policy, why is it that the price of housing in Sydney is in Kiwi dollars over $800,000 per house, where they have that policy? Why is it that in Melbourne, where they have that policy, housing affordability is a lot worse than New Zealand. And it was also interesting to note last week, when I was in Australia meeting with housing ministers and officials, that they noted to me that their overseas policy was inherently difficult to implement and they didn't think it was having any effect either. Supplementary question, Bill Twyford. Why, why did the government why did the government give the Reserve Bank the power to implement LVRs without exempting first home buyers, thus putting the interests of overseas speculators ahead of young New Zealanders, when some overseas speculators can borrow 100% at 1% interest? Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, on this side of the House we respect the independence of the Reserve Bank. But I'd also find it really interesting that the first person... Point of order. My question was why did the government give the Reserve Bank the power to order. implement order. LVRs? The minute, order. The Minister heard the question. I heard the question. Now I'd like the Minister to have the opportunity of answering the question. It's about the Reserve order. Bank's actions. The point I want to make, Mr Speaker, is this side of the House reflects the independence of the Reserve Bank, although the first mention I heard of alternative instruments to putting up interest rates like LVRs was from David Parker on the opposition benches, who suggests the idea, and then when the Reserve Bank Governor suggests we use it, he opposes it. That just shows everything about the hypocrisy of members Order. of Supplementary question. Yep. Uh, order. This is, be, is a legitimate opportunity for Honourable Trevor Mallard to raise a point of order. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I didn't rise because I was sure that you would have intervened. Uh, the use of a word that has been absolutely ruled out, uh, used, used by that Minister, and, and should be withdrawn and apologised for. 
and, and I didn't rise immediately because I was expecting the Honourable Trevor Mallard to do it more quickly. <laughs> the order, the member will Draw stand and withdraw and apologise. Point of order, the Honourable yeah, Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, any time you want me to sit there, I'm happy to. <laughs> there are many, many occasions when I'd be very happy if the member would <laughs> spend more time sitting than standing. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he agree with Bill English that the private sector builders like Fletcher's and Stonewood Homes, who will build Labor's 100,000 affordable starter homes, build houses that look like, that look like the back end of Moscow? Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I don't take too seriously Labor's policy of building 100,000 homes at $300,000 each when the average price of a section in Auckland today is $325,000. So if we're going to make affordable houses, we point need to address order, the issue... Order. I apologise to the Minister. We have a point of order. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I'm, I asked for a point of order. I, and I'm giving the member a point of order. I'm, I don't understand why you're apologising for my I'm point of order. I'm apologising when you haven't the, heard it. I'm not apologising to the member. I'm apologising to the Minister because his answer was interrupted. Now, if the member has a point of order, I will hear it. Mr. Order! Mr. Speaker. It is a point of order, and it will be heard in silence. Mr Speaker, I specifically asked the minister if he agreed with the statement by Bill English. I did not ask for a dissertation on Labor's Kiwi Bill policy. Order. Order. No, I don't need any assistance. What I would appreciate from the Minister, I think he's raising a good point on this occasion, if we could give the Ministers the opportunities to address the question. The, member had, the Minister hadn't uh, been long addressing the question, but he certainly hadn't addressed the question adequately at the time the Member raises the point. I say, no, no, I'm on my feet. But if we get a continual process whereby before the Minister has an adequate opportunity to address the question, we get an interruption from the anybody questioning it, then we're not going to get there. Now, on this occasion, the best way forward is for the Minister to repeat his question, and I will be looking for the Member, sorry, to repeat his question. I'll be looking for uh, the Minister to then address the question satisfactorily. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he, agree, does he agree with Bill English that the private sector builders like Fletcher's and Stonewood Homes, who will be building Labor's 100,000 affordable starter homes, does he agree with Bill English that those builders build homes that look like the back end of Moscow? Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, I have no confidence that those builders will be able to build houses for the $300,000 that Labor claims when the average section price in Auckland is currently $325,000. So I don't care who the builder is, the policy is a nonsense. We must address the issue of land supply, which is exactly what this government is doing with the bill before the House, and I can't believe Labor members opposite are opposing it. Point of order, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I just want to uh, raise with you an issue with regard to your uh, most recent ruling that ministers should be given an opportunity to address a question before a point of order is uh, raised interrupted. Order. This is a point of order. And, and that is a, a very legitimate point. However, where a minister stands up and immediately launches into an attack on the opposition, rather than even suggesting that they might eventually get to answering the question, I think it is legitimate for a member to interrupt them. And repeatedly we've had a situation where Dr Smith has launched immediately into attacking the questioner or the opposition, without actually giving any indication that he's eventually going to get to answering the question. Speaking to the point of order, Honourable Jerry Brown. Mr Speaker, uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith's answer was perfectly adequate, given that Mr Twyford had stated that the Labor Party appears to know already that uh, Fletcher Construction and Stonewood Homes are order. going to be able to build and, these and homes. That, that, is, that is not a point of order. Uh, the point that Chris Hipkins raises is, is, is worthy of consideration. There will be occasions when the Minister is clearly not even attempting to address the question. And on that occasion, I don't have any objection from the questioner raising it immediately. But I think we need to be careful that we don't be, be premature on many occasions and interrupt 
when I perceive that a minister is attempting to address the question, often it takes a bit of an introduction before the minister gets to the stage of adequately addressing the question. But I accept the point the member's making. Question number seven. Point of uh, order. Point of order. The Honourable Was that one Place. of us? Order. Um, I seek leave to table government announcements where foreign purchases at the initial float of Mighty River Power shares were restricted to 30% total purchase, which the government has never described as xenophobic. Yeah, exactly. What a dumb Leave is sought to table that particular document. Is there any objection? There appears to be none. Question number seven, Alfred Naro. Thank you, Order. Mr. Speaker. I've called Alfred Naro. To the Minister for Social Development, what changes has the government made to the welfare system? Honourable Mr. Speaker, Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr. Speaker, National campaigned on welfare reform, and we are delivering on.